The eight glasses of water a day. Hi, <laughs> okay. Um I can actually just read a study straight off on that one. Here it is, the water myth. I've even got it marked. Dr. Heinz Volton, former chair of physiology at this medical school, one of the world's foremost experts on kidney function. After conducting research for 11 months with the assistance of a professional librarian, discovered no conclusive studies about drinking eight glasses of water per day. Bolton believes that the myth originated in the 1940s when the National Institute of Medicine first issued recommendations for dietary nutrient intake, including water. The suggestion to consume about two litres of water per day for optimum hydration contained the long forgotten comment that much of this can be gained from solid food we eat. So raw milk is 90% water, chicken is 54% water, ground beef is 53% water. Caffeine and alcohol, which constitute a significant portion of total fluid intake for many adults, have been thought of as diuretics that dehydrate you by increasing urine flow. Well, this is true when you drink in, in excess. Your daily cup of coffee, bottle of beer, or glass or two of wine will actually contribute to hydration levels and not lead to any depreciable fluid loss. <laughs> Yeah, first glass of wine's been approved. <laughs> so don't feel guilty about that one. I never have, and I've never believed this bloody water thing. I mean, we've we've survived for two million years just walking past the stream and having a sip or dragging some bits of water off a leaf or something as we go past. And you know we get moisture in everything we eat. If it was dry, we wouldn't be able to eat the damn thing, eh? So the more moist it is. If you had fried up a steak on the barbecue, chuck it on your plate. If it wasn't fully cooked, what leaks out? It's just, it's, yeah, you know, you ooh, train your plate, it looks a bit yuck, you know. But I like it, the redder the better, you know. And it's really, it's really moist, isn't it? There's a lot of water in there, or whatever. Yeah, the other thing he's got to say here is, um, <coughs> so this mechanism has evolved over millennia to prevent hy hydration. There's a mechanism we can do. And, um, and he said, to date, there is no archaeological evidence that Grok, that's this guy here, or a camelback. You know what a camelback is? <laughs> <laughs> or for that matter, um, even a leather potato, whatever that is. You know, but he didn't carry a water bottle around with him, did he? You know, he did just find scooping water out of streams and licking dew off leaves. There you go. And maintaining adequate hydration, inc incidentally, throughout his diet. Um, so you've really got to watch it. And I remember when I was doing marathons, they used to say, "Drink, drink, drink. You can never drink enough." Ooh, you know, and so and. Uh, I can remember going to the Rotary Marathon one year and there were more people in the tent from over drinking water, which is hypertremia or something, or hypertremia, lack of salt. They've just, it's really, and they could die. And you'd so they'd rather be dehydrated. Yeah, they've drunk so much water that they've lost all the salt in their system. You know, we're a salty system, you like know. An electrolyte imbalance. Electrolyte has really just left them, yeah. And so it's actually really dangerous, yeah. So, also, when I was doing, uh, I always drank when I was doing marathons, but if I ever did a half marathon or a short, tri short triathlon or something like that, I never drank. I did a triathlon, the Kiri Kiri one once. I ran it in under four minute k's. It was the best time I ever had. And one of the reasons I did it really fast was because I didn't stop for damn drinks and choke myself all the time. <laughs> I mean, if you slow down every five k's to get a drink of water, I mean, it just took, takes time at any time, you know, it was incredible. I weighed myself before and I weighed myself after because I wanted to test this theory. This was years ago I tested this theory. And I didn't lose 2% over the, over, the, over the length of the run. Now, if I'd been running for two hours, if it was a really slow run, I'd want to take some water, but then I wouldn't care. I was in a race and I wanted to, you know, go. So, uh, yeah. Um, so it's crazy. You see all these water bottles and drinks and drink stations around all these runs and that. Oh, it's fine if you just go around and have a drink in that. And I see people walk around with water bottles all the time, you know. It's just nuts. It's crazy. The other thing was they go, oh, if you drink water, you know, you won't feel like eating or something. Water, that doesn't make a scrap of difference. No, no it is. All these things with water makes great sales. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and if someone says, oh, yeah, but you need fresh water, you know. You need to, you know, you're drinking all this tea, sure you get water from all that. But you need some fresh water. Well, hello, when it gets in here, it ain't going to be fresh, is it? It's only fresh from about there till it gets to there. And then it's mixed up with everything else in there. So it's just crazy. It's just nuts. And you've just got to really just, you just got to laugh, eh? We get really programmed to believe in this stuff, eh? So that's the first one I want to get to you. The second is um, we need lots of fibre. Um, 
we know, eh, that if you eat a lot of protein and fat, we go good, eh, to the yeah. time of day. We know <laughs> that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and it was one thing that always worried me. I remember I was doing bodybuilding and we used to eat low-fat proteins and some carbohydrates. And then, you know, and we, we could get quite bound up. It was because we were thinking low-fat, thinking that fat would make us fat. You know, we'd finally cut out the carbs and just eat, you know, mm. chicken breasts by themselves because they were lean and stuff like that. Oh, and I've got a bit oh, tight in here. I can't wait, you know, to get back on my carbs or something to get some fibre in. I was thinking to go. All we really needed was fat. And I know that now, having experimented <laughs> <laughs> and talked to my clients. You know. um, yeah, it's good, eh? Yeah. It's bloody good having a good crap in the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Well, the fat does help push it through. I don't know what it does, but it does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the fibre enough. I found this one on this book. Between 1994 and 2000, two observational studies of 47,000 male health professionals and 89,000 women of the nurses' health study. How's that? Both ran out of a Harvard School of Public Health and half a dozen randomised controlled trials concluded that fibre consumption is unrelated to the risk of colon cancer and is apparently the consumption of... Well, the result of the 49,000... Oh, God, he goes on and on. <laughs> Confirmed that increasing fibre in the diet had no beneficial effect to colon cancer, nor did it prevent heart disease or breast cancer or induce weight loss. It's just a load of rubbish. When, when this guy was here, did you see any fibre here? Maybe some in the nuts? Not much in this because they're all low calorie vegetables, and probably some in the fruit. <coughs> Do you think he would have eaten fruit all year round? No way. He might have got it at a certain time of year for two or three months. Most of the time he's eating this here. That's another thing about beef and lamb and all that sort of stuff. A, a piece of fillet, eye fillet steak, you know, it's supposed to be high in saturated fat, right? Well, yeah, there's 10 grams of saturated fat in every 100 grams of meat. And 4.5 of it is saturated fat. You know what the other 4.5 is? Monounsaturated fat, the good one. <laughs> it's actually perfectly balanced. Yeah. And, um, and you've got in there in your, in your papers here, and I can cover this next myth actually, the vitamin and mineral myth. If you have a look, I've underlined my one, uh, if you find potato, you find potato on your one, and on another one, find beef fillet steak. So one's got vegetables on it, one's got meat on it, right? And you can have a look through this later. But if I just go to the, um, if I just go to the, to the beef fillet steak, and you won't be able to get this on camera, so I'll just, I'll just, I'll just ramble it out. It's got here all the, the, oh, I've got a bit of It's got all the nutrients on this side. Here we go. You've, you've just got the nutrient one. So we've got calcium and iron and zinc and selenium and vitamin B6, B12, fi, all those neat things. Now apparently we're supposed to get our vegetables, so we can get all that stuff right. And we don't want meat because it's bad, it's got saturated fat. But let's have a look at the minerals here. We'll start with potassium. Uh, the potato's got 332, and the beef's got 462. Beef wins. Calcium. Potato's got 4, and the steak's got 5. Beef wins again. What's this one? Iron. Well, you know the beef's got one here. 0. 0.5 and 4.2 for beef. Zinc. 0. 0.2 to, 0. to 4. What's this one? Selenium, a very essential nutrient. The potato's got 0 0.5. The, the, the um, selenium in beef is 12. Vitamin A, beef's higher. Beta carotene, beef's higher. Thiamine, beef, 0 0.07 in the potato and 0 0.13 in the beef. Riboflavin, 0 0.4 to 14. Niacin, 0 0.8 to 10.5. Vitamin B6, 0.07 to 0.44. Vitamin B12, potato, nothing. And 1.4 in the beef. I tell you what, I was just looking down here. If you want, if you want a lot of... Um, oh, the heck was it? Oh, 46.2. Stewed, kidney, here it 
2, vitamin B12, <coughs> it's huge. And, um, and I know people who go around and get B12 injections because they're not getting enough. Well, they probably just need to eat some meat and especially some organ meat like, you know, um, like we've been having lately. Kidney. Kidney, um, steak and kidney. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? You're getting huge amounts of nutrients. So if you want your minerals, what would you eat? Gross cutting it up. You'd eat meat, wouldn't you, to get your minerals. So the myth that like, oh, we need to eat our vegetables and stuff to get all the vitamins and all that sort of stuff, it's kind of, it doesn't even stack up. I mean, you could look right through this whole book that I've got there and you see that meat just, beef just beats it all the time. Now, and this is New Zealand food composition tables. Yeah, 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 anybody can get it, you know. Yeah. Um, so, but one of the things that beef hasn't got, and potato has a lot of, and that's vitamin C. And we go, oh yeah, we need vitamin C. Remember the, remember the ships, you know, oh, we're going to get scurvy unless, you know, because we're eating these biscuits and we, you know, oh, we'll have to take some mandarins with us and then we won't get scurvy because they, they've got lots of vitamin C. We need vitamin C, obviously, you know. But what was going on was, no, it wasn't, it wasn't that they really needed vitamin C. They've been eating, what, what are the biscuits made of? They were flour and sugar biscuits. You know, that's all they had. You know, they had weevils in them and stuff. That was probably good with protein. They were quite good. <laughs> but they were eating the stuff that had to be void of any nutrients. And what does fiber and what does uh, sugar and what does flour do? It strips nutrients out of your body. So here they were. They were eating nutrient nothing food, which was stripping nutrients out of their body. Okay. And then of course they've got scurvy. <laughs> but if they, they just have a normal diet, you don't need lots of vitamin C. Yeah, and they found that if you eat a lot of meat and you don't eat any vegetables, you don't need those heaps of amount of vitamins and stuff like that. If you eat a lot of carbohydrates, which strips vitamins and minerals out of your body, you do, you're gonna have to supplement vitamin C, you're gonna have to supplement with minerals and all that sort of stuff. This brings me to another point. Where do you get your minerals from? If you eat a whole lot of carbohydrates and there's not a, and they strip minerals from your body. And fibre, by the way, stops you absorbing minerals. This is another bad thing about fibre, getting on to fibre. It blocks you up. You have to drink shitloads of water, excuse the language, to make it go through, yeah? And it stops the absorption of important minerals. Why on earth would we want to eat fibre? There's absolutely no reason. And so, where do you get the minerals from if you eat carbohydrates? So you can metabolize those carbohydrates and sugars. Well, you've got to rob your body of them, don't you? And where are the minerals situated in your body? In your bones. Calcium and iron and magnesium, all that stuff, that's all in your bones. Oh, I wonder why we're getting bone deficient. We're eating carbohydrates and we're eating sugars. See how it's like, it's all starting to fall into place, you know? Oh, but we'll just keep eating carbohydrates and take a calcium pill. <laughs> okay, here's a calcium pill. Say it's a 100 milligram calcium pill, you know? And you gobble it down and think, well, I've got 100 milligrams in me now, I'm right. But guess what? You're only going to absorb 3 to 30% of it. You'd have to take the whole bottle to get any, any amount of that. And hey, if you're just eating some fibre with it, you're not even going to absorb that. <laughs> but you spent a lot of money on some calcium tablets and they had you tricked. You know, that was cool. <laughs> so yeah, that, so I always thought, look, if, if I went on one of those Atkins diet, and I ate a lot of fat, ooh, it'd be dead, bad for my heart over the long term. It's not. If I had a whole lot of meat, oh, there's, you know, red meat's supposed to be bad for some reason, I can't remember the reason. Uh, that, might, that should be bad. And I, need my, and I need my vegetables and I need that sort of stuff to get all my, for my good health. It's actually all completely back to front and biased and it's all political. It's nothing to do with good health. So I'm kind of brassed off and I want to make sure everybody knows about it, you know? And um, I just thought it'd be good because I know that it works. I've, I've, I've tested it myself and I know that, that it can stop you from doing a lot of things. Um, the saturated myth, I kind of covered that, you know, with the tocolanes. You can see that the high saturated um, fat doesn't, um, doesn't make you fat and it doesn't make you sick. Now here's the other thing, those tocolanes I didn't tell you about. Remember they were eating a high saturated fat diet before the Europeans came along and fed them up on cheesels. <laughs> then they started to eat some more carbs. Their cholesterol, by the way, went down. And when their cholesterol went down, they started dying more often. <laughs> more than dying. Because they found that low cholesterol is, is a quite a good cause of death. 
<laughs> they found when people with low cholesterol gets low, lower in studies, the ones with high cholesterol live longer than the ones with low cholesterol. Yeah. And cholesterol's got nothing to do at all, in any way, to do with heart disease. Nothing. So why do, they, why do the doctors keep telling you you've got high cholesterol to get your cholesterol down? Well, there's a lot of cholesterol. There's more than just you know the high density cholesterol and the low density one. There's the VLDL, which is a very low density one. There's actually about six or eight of them, okay? But, and it's really, I, could, I couldn't even explain it, I'd have to get you to read it in the book, you know? But it's too hard to check for the very cholesterol that's the, that's the bad guy. It's too hard to check for it. So they just check total cholesterol and go, okay, a percentage of that's bound, bound to be the bad stuff. So we'll just get the whole cholesterol down. Oh. Which means the good cholesterol goes down too. You gain nothing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And there is, by the way, the only reason we get this bad cholesterol, the VLDL, is because we eat carbohydrates. <laughs> the sinners just stop eating carbohydrates. You but end they up tell with you to reduce, to reduce your cholesterol. You cut out things like eggs and yeah. butter. Butter. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's fairly obvious, you know, like um, uh, your body makes most of its cholesterol and puts it in your body, and you need cholesterol, okay? If you went out in the sun and you didn't have cholesterol, you couldn't make vitamin D. Everyone's got to have cholesterol, and you need plenty of it if you really want to be healthy. Um, what the, a real better marker for heart disease is actually the lipids, you know, the things, like I said, the carbohydrates gets turned into lipids and go around your system. That's what you really got to look for. If you've got a lot of those, it's a, it's a better indication. But that's, the lipids aren't the problem either. It's the, it's the bad cholesterols, you know. And then they're no problem either. They're no problem unless they get stuck into your, into your artery walls and they get oxidised. They can't get oxidised unless you eat carbohydrates, by the way, and insulin swings up and down. It just keeps going back to carbohydrates and the insulin problem, you see. It always goes back to there, yeah. So, it's just a... It's just, it's, <coughs> If your cholesterol's up, it's real easy to go, okay, your cholesterol's on, here's a drug for it. Okay, so the drug company makes some money, and you get your cholesterol down. Now, by the way, you know the side effects of taking a cholesterol-low-flowing drug, you? Look, I'm no doctor, I shouldn't be saying this, you know. You need to research this yourself. Now, I could get in trouble for saying this, <laughs> but I know damn well I wouldn't worry about my cholesterol if I've got high cholesterol. Oh, the exercise myth. Oh. Look. you get that one? Hey, yeah, the exercise nuts. You know, um, oh, you've got yeah, a few copies of stuff. Here. Um, yeah, back when I first got a gym, way back in '92 or '90 or somewhere around there, all we worried about was, oh, if you go to the gym, you burn off all this energy and you get in shape. That was about it, you know. So people come in, they work out, and um, and they lose a little body fat, bit of body fat or something. But a couple months later, they're just as fat again, you know. So they work out harder. Because you oh, burn off more energy, eh? And, they, and after a while, they get used to that because their body adapted, and then they, and they look at me, oh, I'm still getting fat. In fact, I'm, I think I'm getting fatter and heavier. Oh, well, let's work out harder, you know? And in the end, you're working out really hard, and you're getting nowhere. And you don't feel like going to the gym, because it's, it sucks. It's hard work. <laughs> it's painful. And you're sore the next day. And did you ever notice, if you ever have a hard workout, you're really hungry the next day? Have you ever noticed that? You are, eh? So if you want to lose weight, would you would you be ex working out really hard and make yourself hungry? It's insane. It's nuts. So the energy, and, like, and, I, and I think I said in my first DVD, this one here, it took an iron man, it took 30 hours training a week, it took two years to get to that level of being able to work out hard enough to lose enough, you know, to, to lose weight. I went from 72 down to 66 kilograms. I was light and lean and fast. But I was thinking about it later, was it because I burned off all that energy, or was it because I spent so much damn time on the road, like eight hour bike rides and four hour runs, I just didn't have time to eat? Maybe I just wasn't eating enough. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, what was it really? Another interesting thing, you know, when you stopped eating carbohydrates and your, your fat cells decided to release some fuel into your system, now you've got fuel in your system, your muscle cells are going, ah, we've been fed now. In fact, we've got more energy than we need. Let's burn off some energy. Uh, let's increase the metabolism. Mm. Oh. What else can we make it do? Oh, let's make it feel like doing exercise. And did you notice that you wanted to go home and ride the horse the other day? It wasn't yeah. a job anymore? Yeah, I, I find it too just in the mornings. Because I was always a big one for not eating breakfast. Yeah. And because I just didn't feel like that. And I reckon that comes from milk and cows because you're up at five and you never eat before you get up yeah. and got into the habit of not eating breakfast 
Now I force myself to eat breakfast. As soon as you've eaten breakfast, and then we come here, and you've done 10 minutes on this, you're ready to go. Yeah. You've just got heaps of energy, and it's like, what can you do now? And yeah, you you'd like yeah. a go-go bunny. That's right. <laughs> See, so here's the difference. <laughs> you're eating carbohydrates, you, your blood gets low in energy, your, your muscle cells are starving, and you're supposed to go down and exercise. It's just not going to happen. And if you did, it's not going to happen for very long, and you're going to quit the gym on whatever you're doing, because you're just not eating right. You eat you eat correctly, eat like this, you'll have plenty of fuel in your blood, your muscle cells are, are, are pumping along, and your body's going, let's burn off some of this extra energy, we don't need it. Make this person go and want to do something. It's a whole lot better going, gee, I just feel like doing something. Isn't that a lot better than going, oh, I'm supposed to do something? You see what I'm saying? There's a whole difference here. And now I thought this. Something, you, don't, yeah. you don't even think about eating. <laughs> and it's not until you get back inside at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you go, oh yeah, well, food time. So then I eat then, and then I get to 8, 9 o'clock at night before I'm hungry again. But in one good thing, I feed the kids earlier. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm not hungry, I'll just feed them, they sit down and I yeah, don't eat. I'll it's generally a, eat at 8, 8 30. Yeah. It's quite interesting not being hungry, eh? It's mm. kind of weird. Yeah, and see, now you don't have to time your meals. You don't have to eat at 8 yeah. and 10 and mm, mm, mm. You just eat like half a dozen eggs with cheese on it for breakfast. And then you wait till you're hungry, and you go, well, when am I going to get hungry? I suppose I should eat. It's like you suppose you should, eh? Yeah, you've also got uh, a whole bunch of things here in the back here. It's about grains, wheat, corn, bread, cereal, pasta. And I might go through it. It's, one's called conventional wisdom, sort of what we're taught. And the other one is, um, is a primal blueprint. This is, this is recorded off primal, primal, primal blueprint here. This is, a, this is another book, and the guys come up with some things. And I, I really like it because it just explains exactly what I've been trying to explain here all night. So, the, so the, about grains, which is wheat, rice, corn, bread, cereal, and pasta, etc. The conventional wisdom is it's the staff of life, the foundation of healthy eating. Six to eleven servings recommended by US government and numerous other experts. Provides main source of energy for working muscles. Choose whole grains for more nutrition value and extra fiber. Oh, I just thought about something about whole grains. Oh, it might cover it here. And here's the um, primal blueprint. Now, you know, this is the caveman sort of theory. Worst mistake in the history of human race. Um, drives excess insulin production, fat storage, and heart disease. It's an allergenic and uh, Im immune suppressing, nutritional value inferior to plants and animals. Whole grains possibly worse due to offensive pro-inflammatory immune and digestive system disturbing agents, especially excessive fiber. Also, they found out that <coughs> whole grains might not be as good <laughs> as, as, you know, as, as conventional grain, like whole grain wheat might, might be actually worse than white and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. That's actually really interesting because with the horses, majority of our grains cannot be fed whole. Yeah. Yeah. Because they poison them. Horses have got a really, really yes. sensitive yeah. so, um, gut right. system. The fibre on the grains and a lot of the grains that we mm. eat, are pretty toxic to us. Yeah. Well, they are to the, they'll kill a horse. And, and they're very toxic yeah. to a horse, obviously, yeah. 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 So, mm -hmm. interesting, name. And they always want us to have whole fibre because it slows the release of <coughs> insulin into your system. But then it's got its other downfalls, okay? Saturated animal fat. Conventional wisdom. Limit intake. Heart disease risk factor. Eating fat makes you fat. Replace saturated fats with polyunsaturated fatty acids like vegetable oils. Now, here's the primal blueprint or the caveman idea. Little or no association with heart disease risk, as from the Framington and Nurses Health Studies, I just talked about that a while ago. Should be a major dietary calorie source, especially from animal foods. It drove human evolution, the advancement of brain function for two million years. We took over the earth, eating that stuff. <laughs> okay? Promotes efficient fat metabolism, weight control, and stable energy levels. Major risk factor for heart disease is actually metabolic syndrome driven by excess polyunsaturated fatties and insufficient omega-3s and high carbs, excess insulin and an overly stressful lifestyle. Makes sense though, doesn't it? Cholesterol. Conventional wisdom. Strictly limited intake. Elevated levels equals heart disease risk. Take statin drugs to eliminate animal, and eliminate animal foods, especially eggs. <laughs> um, consider preemptive statin therapy of family history of heart disease. That's the conventional wisdom, isn't it? 
you know, if you're a bit worried about it, just take some statins. Okay, the caveman diet, essential metabolic nutrient, little or no relevance to heart disease. Only dangerous when oxidization and inflammation occur from poor diet and exercise habits. Statins can have disastrous side effects and, a, and minimal, if any, direct benefit. So, by the way, it just reminded me here, excess, a poor diet, meaning excess carbohydrates and insulin, and too much exercise or heavy exercise produces oxidization, okay, free radicals, which, which you know, is, is, the, is the problem. The cholesterol is oxidizing, okay, yeah. Getting overtrained is a real bad thing to do. Even one real hard, bad workout, you know, where you're sore the next day and you're, and, you're, and you're wasted for about a day, that's not good. That's, you're asking, you're increasing your risk of heart disease. <laughs> I read something last week about triathlons and saying yeah. there's evidence that triathlons damage your heart long term because when you push yourself that hard, you actually cut off a little bit of your heart muscle. Yeah, I know all about Permanently. it. Permanently. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Like, well, my last, uh, honestly, my last Ironman I did, I, my usual training speed on the bike is 30 kilometres an hour, average speed, okay? I, I, I'd gone out. I know I meant uh, you do 180 kilometers on, on the bike ride after your 10k swim or whatever. And I, I'd gone 90 k's out, I turned around, I was on my way back, and I checked my average speed, it was 33 kilometers an hour. And I thought, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna pop, I'm gonna blow up before I get back. And I was in a whole of a lot of pain, because it's quite painful. And I thought, oh well, I'll just keep going. If I die, I die. And if I don't, I'll, if I don't I'll never do another one again. And that was my last Iron Man, yeah. I just, you know, that's what you do. You've trained for two years, you finally got to the event. You know, you're coming third in the country or something, you know, in, in, in my age group. There's a lot on the line here, and you, I was prepared to die. And Why did you do that? Oh, what did made I you do that? <laughs> <laughs> it was important then, you know. We're crazy, people. I'd never do something like that again. I wouldn't even bother going running now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, stupid. I said that about the kids cross country the other day. Yeah. Marty, I'm going to have to Oh, go for it, Thank you. See you yeah. later. Yeah, nuts, eh? <laughs> it was, yeah, I could say it was fun with that one. <laughs> okay, what have we got here? Eggs. Minimise consumption due to high cholesterol content. Choose just egg whites as high protein alternative. Yeah. I've chucked all my egg yolks down the sink. I was doing it in this one here. No way. There's no way I chuck my egg yolks down. And here's why. Because egg, egg yolks have zero correlation with heart disease or cholesterol levels. Yolk, extremely nutritious. Whites, minimally so. Enjoy in abundance. Yeah. So I just break half a dozen eggs into a bowl, scramble them up, put some salt in them, and that's great. And even put some cheese on them. Fibre. Conventional wisdom. Important dietary goal derived mostly from grains, improves gastrointestinal function. I actually said it. Lowers cholesterol, speeds elimination, helps control weight by minimizing, minimizing caloric intake. Sort of got some points there. Fiber, um, on the caveman diet or, or primal blueprint, incident, incidental fiber from vegetable and fruit is optimal. optimum. Excess fiber from grain-based diet contributes to nutrient deficiency by inhibiting nutrient absorption, also hampers gastrointestinal function and elimination. Blocks you up. Now, meal habits, that's quite interesting. You know, you usually have your three scale conventional wisdom and skip meals equals slow metabolism, low energy levels, and sugar cravings. But the, prim the primal blueprint says eating frequency is a personal preference, but it's all about insulin. Control production and even sporadic eating habits will sustain energy without regular meals. It's in our genes. Intimate fasting is a great catalyst for weight loss. You know, they say, oh, don't fast. Oh, don't pass them down. The kids fast now, that's what they give them. Um, say, oh, drink as much juice as you like. It's got sugar and then eat barley yeah. things, you know. They're probably just piling up the fat while they're doing it. Yeah. If they really wanted to fast, they should just stop eating. Drink some water. In a few hours, the body will go, oh, let's release some there's some, there's some ketones and some fats, you know, <laughs> and they'll be fine. I knew, I know people who fast, and I, I was quite amazed. I thought, well, fasting, that's the one that I'm lying down or something, you know. <laughs> but they walk around having fun, they go swimming and playing a lot, they seem to have more energy than us. We have to go back and have a feed and a rest, you know, they're still pumping away out there. 
and they could fast for two or three days a week. And they're in really good shape, you know? It gives your body a good break. We must have fasted all the time for about two million years. We didn't have regular meals at 7 and 10 and 12. We got up, looked for some food, you know, we got something to kill, you know, a possum or a rat or a swan or a mammoth or whatever, you know. You know yeah, we would have eaten the thing and we would have eaten until we were full, by the way. Chocker full. And this is another thing about this diet. You sh if you're going to do this eat the meat next thing, fill yourself up. You know, it's normal. You know, if we had a big, if we had made a kill, or something, we would have eaten till we were full. We wouldn't go, well, we better not eat too much. We would have gone stomach to stretch. They didn't even know what stomach was. <laughs> they just uh, went in here and came out there. <laughs> so, you, you know, you, you just, just got to start to rethink, hey, you know, how was it? Because this, this, the crap that we're fed nowadays is just insane. It's, you know, the, the things we're supposed to believe, it's just... You know, once you understand it, you see it's just ridiculous, eh? Mm. I was just talking to a guy tonight, he dropped in about a week ago, his name's Bear. And he, when he dropped in, we got a bit of a Friday cake. Mm. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a really stocky little Mary guy, and he's bald, and there's tattoos all over him. And, um, and, he, and he weighed 112 kilograms. And he said, uh, last year I was 225. Mm. Oh, wow. He just came down from Auckland. He said, I, I, had, to, um, I had to strengthen me Harley. <laughs> because you know, it was bending, you had to strengthen it up. And I think they were pretty strong points. Anyway, he came down from Auckland, he went out to uh, Raglan there and lived out there for a year on the farm, and, and it's right on, uh, on on the beach. And so he's been eating, because he didn't have much money, he's been eating like fish, those sole, from, you know, they're really big, sole, they've got quite big flounders, really high fat, and yeah. stuff off his farm. And he went down from a hundred. 225 kilograms down to about 120 or something. And then his friends came around and go, oh, you are going to get a heart attack, you know, you're eating all the fat, you know, all bad. You should get some vegetables. He goes, oh, okay, so he'll, he'll, he'll grow a garden. So he goes out and digs the garden and puts all the stuff in. But for some reason, all the sheep came in and ate it. <laughs> you know? So he said, well, I won't tell my cousins and that because they'll think I'm bad. And he came in here and... Um, and I told him, I, I said, what do you have for breakfast? And he goes, oh, it's a big steak and a couple of eggs here. Yeah, yeah. And I said, when do you eat next? He goes, oh, when I feel like it. And I said, when would that be? And he goes, oh, sometimes next day. And sometimes I might get hungry in the afternoon or something or whenever there's food. He didn't think, see, he, he didn't know all the stuff we're supposed to know. You know, like fat's bad for you and um, you're supposed to eat these certain regular intervals and stuff like that. He just ate when he could get a feed. He was never hungry in between because he ate so much fat and protein and he had 225 kilograms of the fat in his body anyway, you know, so he used plenty of fuel for a long time. He called me up tonight and since last week he's down to 208. 100. 108. Yeah, from a two, 112 down to 108 now, yeah, in, a, in another week because I said, no, don't worry about it. They need the carbs if you want to. You, you're doing fine. He says, how old do you reckon I am? Didn't he go? He said, how old am I? And I thought, oh my God, I hate these Christians. 44? <laughs> and I said, well, you think actually, yeah, about 44, 45. He said, I'm 60. Oh, yeah. He looks really young. He's got really good skin. Speaking of skin, <laughs> I've had bloody dry skin for years. I remember going and getting a massage somewhere. He go, oh, you've got dry skin. You need to drink more water. You ever heard that? Yeah. God. So I drink and drink, drink water, and I get all bound up. How come you drink water, you get all bound up? And, um, and I said, no, oh, this water thing doesn't work for me. <laughs> anyway, so I just said, well, I've got dry skin. I have to get rubber stuff all over, you know. Well, six months ago, I, I started getting into this eating more fat. Mm, yeah, and, yeah. Mm. and I tell you what, my skin's improved. My no skin's dry not dry skin. anymore. I could go like this a couple of months, uh, about even six months ago, go like that, it would stay like that. It just goes down. You know, it just you know, that's how you check the skin in it. And right here, the bit that gets all the sun, I mean that would just stay out. It would just stay there like that. It just disappears now. Oh <coughs> right. And you look at islanders, you've got the Samoans, um anyone in the islands who lots of coconuts, all that saturated fat, they got good skin, you know? Yeah. And someone said, Oh you should rub coconut on your skin, that makes it look really good and I go, it probably does, but why don't you just eat it? <laughs> <laughs> They all did it, they're fine. You know, oh no, Ooh, cholesterol. 
saturated fat became a bad thing, they decided, well, we'd better, you know, it basically became a bad thing because they invented new ways of making oil, you know, out of, out of plants, you know, like olive oil and grapeseed oil and corn oil and all sorts of oil. They even made some oils out of plants that didn't even exist. <laughs> canola oil. Have you heard of a canola plant? <laughs> I don't even know what it is. It's probably made from petrol. Right. But anyway, <laughs> they've got all these oils. And, and all these oils that you get from plants, they're great. They're okay. There's nothing wrong with them. But if you put them, if you put them in and start frying them up, they become trans fats. Now, they're, they're, they're deadly sort of things. You know? oil. Yeah, they can't handle being heated. Saturated fat, you can heat it up. You can burn the stuff. It's okay. It doesn't, it doesn't oxidise, it's fine. Yeah. So cooking, cooking butter, cooking lard, you know, all the stuff grandma's cooking, or grandma's grandpa, you know, yeah. Cooking the, cooking the bad stuff if you want to be healthy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, but what they found is we, we've been eating so much of these oils and they go into so much bacon and stuff in the supermarkets that we're getting heaps of, of, of omega-6 and, and it's also oxidised omega-6. So, Back here in Roxdale, we, we were getting about um, saturated uh, saturated fats and, and polyunsaturated fats about balanced one to one. Now it's kind of six to one, six to omega six in only one of the of the of the saturated fats, and it's way out of balance. And we're not getting enough of omega threes, the fish type oils and stuff like that. Now it's pretty easy just to cut back on your on your, on your sixes. Just eat this way. Just eat that way. That's all you have to do. Just don't cook them vegetable oils and stuff, you know. We're, we're perfectly fine without it. <laughs> so, I mean, every time I look at this, it, I just can't find uh, a way of not, you know, a way it's not going to work. See, up here they just put a cross through the grains. <laughs> yeah. So, what, what the whole idea of this is anyway, I just thought if I can get this on tape, maybe get it on the thing. Uh, get it on DVD so people can have a look at it and just go, well, here's a chance for me, you know, I've been trying to lose weight for years, but the things that stop me is I'm just hungry all the time and, I, and, I, and I'm supposed to exercise and all that sort of stuff. Exercise isn't going to help you lose weight. If you want to go for a walk, go for one. You know, if you feel like you want to burn up some energy, it's your body telling you we need to burn up some energy, go do it. But if you don't feel like exercising, your cells are telling you, don't go and exercise, just listen. You know, you'll want to do it. One day you'll be eating away, you know, your steak and eggs or whatever, <laughs> and you go, I just feel like doing something, and then you will. It'll happen. Yeah. And then if you do feel like something, go for a walk. Don't overdo it, of course, you know, because you know, you a lot of us go, oh, I feel great. Let's go and mow the lawns with lead wax on my legs or something. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go and um, mow the football grounds with a push mower. You gotta be sore the next day if you haven't killed yourself. Yeah, so be careful with exercise, okay? And um, and if anyone's watching this and they and they and 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 they're, and they're a weight trainer, um, I can tell you too that, that boy, you need to be careful with weight training. You, you can really knock yourself around with weight training. You can overtrain big time and really hamper your fat loss and toning and muscle growth by by. Just overdoing it with training. It's too easy to do with weight training. Yeah. We train too long and we train too hard. You don't need to do very much with weight training. As we found out over mm. from experience, eh, again. Especially if you're like <laughs> over 40 or something, you know. Um, and that's why I like these machines, vibration training machines. They don't overtrain it. You notice that? You can come in here, you leave feeling better than when you go out. Mm. It does all the things that you get from weight training. 
it makes your fast twitch, it uses your fast twitch muscle fiber. 